Hi, my name is Robert and I wanted to welcome you to the shop. Today we're going to do the 7000i, the F412, and we're going to just focus on the general areas or crucial areas of maintenance. Before we begin the maintenance tips, I want to encourage you to keep a manual with this unit. I want you to read this manual. I want you to pay attention to it. There are lots of good tips as far as operation and maintenance. First thing I want to do is uh, inspect the filter. It's important for the filter not to be too dirty. Uh, I want to tell you that you can vacuum this filter off three times and then after that it needs to be replaced because it loses its electrical charge. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to visually inspect the power cord. I want to make sure that nothing's frayed, that everything appears to be okay. Uh, I also, when I plug this unit in, I want to make sure that the light in the plug is lit up so that you can verify that you have power. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to start the inspection process by removing this front cover and getting it out of the way so that you can inspect the heat block assembly and you also can inspect the coils and the pump. I begin by having a 10 millimeter socket to remove the two front. The next part of the process is that we are going to remove the four bolts on the back of the unit here and that will aid us in getting the front cover off. Then after that, we will lay the unit down on its belly. The next phase for actually for removing the front cover is going to be remo removing these six bolts. There's one here, one here. There are one, two, three on the bottom. This is the bottom of the 7000, the F412, and we're going to remove the five bolts here, 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 and here, and then two, one here, and one here, in order to remove the back. In addition to the five bolts that were on the bottom of the unit, we're going to remove the two lower bolts that are on the back of the unit once we have it laying down on its face. What I like to do is use a pair of needle nose pliers or a magnet to extract the bolts. These pockets are fairly deep and impossible to get your fingers down into. So one other thing that you need to think about is that if you want to make totally sure that the unit is, does not have any water in it prior to moving it, you can remove this drain bolt and the water will come out of the tank. And you want to keep the insert from spinning and you pull this out. The unit then, all of the water that's in the sump basin or in the well where the pump sits will drain out. Um, but if you don't, you don't have to do that on each job, but it is very important that you do it during the winter for winterization. Get all of the water out of that basin so that the pump doesn't freeze. The next step that we want to do is that we want to stand the unit up and we want to remove the front cover. At this point we want to remove this sensor which is the humidistat and we want to free it up so that when we actually remove the back of the unit in order to inspect the pump and other essentials then that doesn't get ripped off. The first thing that we're going to do after removing the front cover is we're going to remove the heat exchanger and I want you to pay attention to the orientation. 
This label up here at the top tells you how it goes in and you should pay attention to which side of the machine it's on. <clears throat> what you need to do is inspect this for dirt and uh, if need be you can apply some light detergent, actually dishwashing soap of some type. I take a hose, I don't want to use a uh, nozzle on this, but I take a hose and just lay the tip of the hose on here and wash it down real thoroughly, get all of the soap out of the unit. The next step would be to inspect the coils. If they're dirty, you want to clean them off. You can either do that by vacuuming and then blowing it off or blowing either one of them down. Uh, if need be, you might need to use coil cleaner and you want to pay particular attention to the safety precautions. You probably want to be in a well-ventilated area in order to do that. If you clean the coils, you don't want to mess up the fin pattern. You can do that with compressed air or vacuuming, as I said, but pay attention that you don't, you don't mess up the fin pattern because it will affect your efficiency. One other thing that you need to consider or do a visualization of is any of the gasketing around the unit where both the front and the back join together has gasket. It is essential that it be proper, it be in place simply because Airflow is very important in the entire process and that gasketing seals the units or seals the sections from each other which allows for proper airflow. The next thing that we want to do is we want to remove the back, set it down, and then we want to inspect the well in the bottom of the back where the pump sits. You're either going to have the marshmallow safety float switch or you will have what they know what they call a split ring uh, magnetic safety overflow switch. Neither of these should engage unless the pump fails and this fills up with water. So uh, what happens is the, this unit is actually mounted on the side of the pump. It needs to be checked to make sure that it's not corroded that there's not filled up with gunk, with dried mud, or anything of that type. Now that we've completed the inspection, we want to start the reassembly. We want to verify that all the gaskets are in place, and we're going to start with the heat exchanger block. We want to pay attention to the orientation of the block um, and make sure that it is in place and that everything appears to be secure. The next step is simply to replace the back, making sure that the wiring doesn't get pinched. <clears throat> you want to not forget the humidistat and you want to put it back on the post that sits on top of the heat exchanger block. Now I'm going to put on the front cover of the machine. I uh, want to make sure that all the gaskets are in place. Just give it a visualization. Slide it on. You don't want to force anything. You want to get everything lined up pretty much. And then start your bolts. Now that we've replaced a total of 13 bolts back in the two housings, securing them up, we can put the filter back in. And really, basically, it's ready to go. I wanted to caution you and state that it's very important to get all of these bolts threaded started by hand as much as possible, even if you're just using a ratchet, all right? You do not want to cross thread them. You want to draw them up snug, but not over tighten them. The maintenance really and truly is determined by the type of environment that it's in. But until you get a feel for that, really and truly you need to do uh, scheduled maintenance every once in a while to look at it to see so that you can get that feel for what's going into it. So I wanted to thank you for coming by the shop and wish you the best of luck.